Hey there church family, whether you meet in a home like this one, back at our church facilities, or maybe even a coffee shop, life groups are how we get to grow more like Jesus, encourage each other and actually do life together. So whether you're joining for the first time, whether you've been coming for ages, have the best time in your life group this week. Well, here we are talking about Kingdom Calling and uh, it's been awesome to have um, Pastor David Bland from CBC South, but also uh, so loved across our church family come along last weekend and share in our morning services on the Sunday and then at night to hear from uh, our very own Pastor Tanya Chessa. And really, they were both talking about blessed to be a blessing and what it looks like and what it means for God to use us in our spheres of work to to bless people to see the kingdom of god um, to give people a foretaste of what um, how good jesus is and, and the plan he has for them and so as we go into our groups this week and even as we look ahead to next week's message which is going to be about um, god's will walking in god's will it's going to be great for us to reflect on how do we make sense of our work sometimes we just need to pause and examine where we are and think about, are we doing the things that God has called us to? Is this calling still strong? Um, or where he might be moving us to, or where he might be wanting to renew our attitude in the midst of our work. And so there's an amazing verse in Galatians um, 6, verse 4 to 5. It says, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. And how often do we fall into that trap with our work of comparing what we're doing or maybe you struggle from time to time thinking, comparing what you're getting for a wage or what other people are doing and how much people are pulling their weight. But this verse brings us back to remembering that actually that all those things are distractions from doing something to the best of our ability. It goes on to say, without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. And in the message, it actually says, make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. The work you've been given, it's been given by God. The things that he's put you into and the experiences he's given you might seem like a mundane thing, but God opens up opportunities for us right in the midst of those circumstances. Um, And we can see that they've been given to us And then it says, sink yourselves into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Wow. God gives us the freedom to choose. And he also says, now, with all the gifts, with all the skills, with all the abilities, with all the time, or some of the time, that you have, how can you do your creative best? And so this week in our groups, let's talk about that. Let's discuss that. Let's reflect on our own as well about where we are and what maybe God is stirring in us or reminding us again to do our very best unto him in our work. The second thing that I really wanted to just touch on as we think about this whole area of reflecting on our work is that, you know, we can ask for God to strengthen us. We can ask for God to open doors of opportunity so that we can be more effective for his kingdom, so that we can have those um, spiritual conversations that he wants us to have in our workplaces, so we can impact people for the Lord and give a reason for the hope that we have. There's a great verse in Psalm 90 and it's verse 17. It says, may the favor of the Lord our God, rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. What a fantastic prayer to pray. But you know, that's written in the Old Testament. And when we look at it through the lens of what Jesus has done for us through the cross, we can see that the favor of God we have, we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. We have God's favor, his free unmerited favor in Christ. So we can say from a gratitude point of view, thank you that the favor of the Lord rests on us because we have Christ in our life and we're his ambassadors. Now, Lord, would you establish the work of our hands for your glory? Would you establish the work of our hands? And so it's a great prayer to pray, but we can see it through the filter and through the lens of the cross and the sacrificial work that Jesus has done on our behalf. Maybe some of you uh, need to pray or God's encouraging you to pray 
that prayer out of gratitude. Thank you, Jesus, that your favour, your free unmerited favour is with me as I go to work and establish the work of my hands. Use me for your glory. Establish the work of my hands so that it might point people to you. A fantastic prayer to pray. As we go into discussion and prayer in our groups, it's really so um, important to remember that his strength is sufficient for us in our work that sometimes we are feeling tired or we're feeling um, there's, there's extra demands at home or there are things that we are struggling with or talking about or thinking about that are filling our mind and sometimes can be distractions or can be heavy loads that we carry but there's a great promise in Philippians this is Paul writing from prison and he's writing to the Philippians and he's saying, you know, I've learned the secret of being content. I've learned what it means to have much or have little and to know that actually I'm okay in the midst of either of those circumstances because I know that Jesus' strength is sufficient. Listen to what he says. He says, I can do all things. And in the Amplified, it goes, says, which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. So, so I'm, I'm not needing to add Jesus plus all this stuff. I can look to Christ and say, Jesus, your strength is enough for me. It is sufficient for me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Let's pray together, right? That we would wake up each day and, and maybe dedic as we dedicate our days to God, that he would infuse us with inner strength and confident peace as we walk into our workplaces, our volunteering places, our places where we care for people and that we have a distinction about us, that we have godly confidence and we have confident peace because Jesus is with us and his strength is sufficient. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for th that you want us to not just keep going through the motions, but to take stock and take time to think about why we're doing what we're doing, to think about and reevaluate and assess and with the leading of your spirit, consider what we're doing for our work. And I just pray as we meet in our life groups, as we discuss this, that there would be so much encouragement of what you are already doing, of perhaps where you're moving and shifting and stirring new things across the life of our church. And so Lord, help us to remember that your strength is sufficient and to draw from that strength as we go to work. In your name, amen.